Orapam people. The Orapam, also known as Iwarapam, Oarapam, Oyarapam, or Oropoi, were the aboriginal inhabitants of much of Karamoja in Uganda, and T. Elgon area and West Pakut, Trans and Zoya and Turkana regions in Kenya. Their descendants were largely assimilated into various communities present in their former territories, including the Aitso, Karamajong, Pakot, Turkana, and Bukusu. They are or were found in scattered pockets between the Turkwal River, Kimorongit Mountains, and M.T. Ilgon. One report indicates that they formerly spoke the unclassified Orapam language. Origins According to Webster, the Orapam nursery was located near M.T. Moroto, from which they moved west to the plain between Nepet and Mount Elgon. Orapam traditions recorded by Wilson capture the extent of their ancient territories, the whole Turkana to a point east of Lake Turkana, which the Orapam called Milamelt, the Cherangani Hills eastward to Lake Beringo, much of the trans Enzoia district all in present-day Kenya, M.T. Elgon and all of Tiso sub-region in Uganda, as well as the areas of Diding assimilation. It is currently assumed that the Orapam were the original inhabitants of their territory, and that successive waves of migrants invaded the territory. Wilson suggests that the first invaders of the Orapam territory were proto kalenjin speakers who may have included the Nanya, Tuso, and Teeps. They were followed by the Muluri, who had occupied with certainty what are now Jai country and large parts of Dadaf country in Uganda. It is estimated that their arrival in those districts occurred 600 to 800 years ago, i.e. c. 1200 to 1480. The Orapam were assimilated into various Karamajong groups as clans aspects of Karamajong ethnography afar. Navalli. Society. Appearance. Wilson 1970 noted, that some individuals living among the Karamajong and who claimed Orapam ancestry could be distinguished by their reddish-brown skin, peppercorn hair. On this basis, he ascribed them to the Khoisan group. In 1970, their main mark was a custom of wearing a single cowrie shell attached to a forelock placed over the center of the forehead for women, or an indented mark in the center of the forehead for men. Housing Traditions also captured by Wilson note that the Orapam had well-built houses of three to four rooms unlike the Karamajong big gardens and long-horned cattle. They also had a reputation as good potters, and pottery attributed to them is found all over the area. Clothing The women wore skin clothing and large earrings and did not plait their hair. The men wore nothing but a belt covering their penis and had long pigtails. Both sexes wore many bangles and covered themselves in a red oil ochre mixture. Industry, industry. Wilson postulates that they had no knowledge of iron working as most of their tools and implements were Stone Age. Religion and customs. Their religious rites are said to have invariably taken place at sunrise, usually on rock outcrops. Some involved animal sacrifices. Some were reserved for elders, while others were open to all. Ritual feasts were held at stone circles. Most accounts of the Orapam state that they did not practice circumcision as a rite of initiation. Pakatozic Orapam Conflict Oral traditions indicate that the expansion of Elwu speakers into Acholi caused the breakaway of a group who were initially known as Jai. The Jai came from the vicinity of Guluvo Bear was a section of the group who came from a hill known as Got Turkin. The Jai, who are said to have been Liuo-speaking, though governed by elders and not chiefs, indicating that their culture was not fully Elwuized, advanced eastward and entered the present Karamoja boundary at Adelaine. The territory they entered was then occupied by the Miliari, who were pushed to the vicinity of Koten Mountains. The Jai from Got Turkin, now calling themselves Turkana, broke away from the main Jai populace at Kotido and advanced eastward bringing extreme pressure to bear on the Maliri at Koten causing that group to split into two. One section came to be known as Merrill while the other referred to themselves as Pakatozuk. The Pakatozuk, whose movements would have greatest impact on the Orapam, moved south arriving at Nakalora, 
which lies on the lip of the Turkana escarpment just north of Moroto Mountain. This incursion disturbed Orapam, who were settled around Beringo, causing a breakup of that group, which led to migrations in various directions. Turquel Some Orapam moved towards the Turquel, both below and above Turquel Gorge. Uusin Jishu Other Orapam moved into Uusin Jishu, Maasai held territory. According to Maasai tradition, an alliance of the Uusin Jishu and Syria communities attacked the Kemgul, who then occupied the plateau today known as Uusin Jishu. A Karamajong informant noted in 1916 that Nandi occupied territory previously stretched as far north as the sources of the Enzoir River, i.e., Mt. Elgon, a territory that had been occupied by the Nandi as lately as the time of the grandfathers of that generation, i.e., early to mid 19th century. The Karamajong raided the northern Nandi sections twice before the Nandi launched a big raid against them at Chu Hill near the junction of Kanyangarang and Turkul rivers. The Masinko clan of Karamajong who were pasturing here counterattacked and successfully drove of the Nandi raiders. In response to the Nandi raid, the Karamajong organized a powerful force to break up the Nandi nearest the Turkul Enzoya watershed, but the expedition returned and reported that the Nandi had withdrawn too far south. The Karamajong were unmolested by the Nandi from that time, and the Turkul Enzoya watershed became a no man's land. Kimorongit. Yet others moved to the Kimorongit Mountains, Karasuk, which were still part of Orapam territory, as well as the area west of there and south of Moroto Mountain. The Pakatozik finding that they were no longer facing a formidable tribal grouping to the north and west of Beringo, themselves expanded in that direction expelling other Orapam from the Cheringani Mountains and further west right up to the slopes of M.T. Elgon, hence limiting Turkana southern movement. It is notable that the emerging Sibe referred to the M.T. Elgon Orapam as Siriqua. The Siriqua population at M.T. Elgon, as evidenced by circle holes, was fairly dense, and it is likely that their identity was still largely intact. It would take the Karamajong dispersion of the Orapam at Kapchaliba in the early 18th century to finally submerge the Orapam Siriqua identity. The Battle at Kashaliba A notable battle that occurred around 1825 or 1830 near Kashaliba is largely perceived to have signaled the snuffing out of Orapam identity. A notable element of the battle is the Orapam tying themselves together with leather ropes. Orapam descendants romanticized the encounter, noting that the Karamajong kept beating the Orapam and drove them further and further south. Finally, the Orapam became tired of running. They began killing their cattle to make leather ropes out of their skins. They tied themselves together with those ropes so that none could run away. They said, We are tired of running. It is better that we should all die here, toad to Karamajong. On the other hand, provide a brutal military assessment of the encounter and the state of Orapam society at that point. They note that their shields were larger than ours but were ineffective as they were made of cowhide. Their spears were unlike ours, more like those of the Nandi. When we were strong enough, we desired their cattle which had long horns, and we fought a great battle with them. However, they were cowards, and their elders had to force the young men to fight us in doing this. They gathered them together in long line. Some areas were unaffected by this battle, and Orapam remained between Lalachet and Naimalu in Payan County in Nakapirapirat district, and in the area between Mt. Elgon and Mt. Kadam. Traditions of the Didinga people of South Sudan apparently record displacing a red people, called the Arjit, who were skilled in pottery making. Diaspora Aitso Aitso clan names reveal a history of long-standing ethnic interactions and found amongst these are names of Bantu and northern Nilotic origin. Some of these are clan names are said to be of Iwarapam origin. Traditions recorded among the Joe Padhola in Keni indicate that there were two waves of Aitso settlement in their present lands. The first was family-based and was peaceful. This was followed by an extensive and aggressive migration that left the Aitso in control of a large swathe of territory that by 1850 extended as far as the western highlands of Kenya. 
A story collected by Turpin 1948 suggests that the Aitso are largely descended from the Orapam, a suggestion that has been advanced by many other historians. Karp notes that the Karabojakol was southern Aitso i Orapam. Karamajong, Turkana, and Teeps. Some Orapam fled northwards to join the Turkana and Teeps. People considering themselves Orapam were as of 1970, according to Wilson, particularly concentrated within the Karamoja area in Mathenico and Jai counties, and to a lesser extent in Bakora. Some were also found among the Teeps people of Mt. Moroto and Mt. Kadam. Others were found in Payan County, notably at Lorange Duet. Bukusu. Other refugees swelled the Bukusu population, where they led a distinctly different way of life within recorded memory. Uusin Jishu Masai. Some Orapam refugees fled eastward and found safe haven on the Uusin Jishu Plateau, where they have been strongly identified with the U.S. in Kishu Masai. Pakut. Some refugees joined the Pakut 